everyone, it's Morgan and Angie with The Shift from People Pleasing to Living and Loving Fully. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about, well, are you a control freak? <laughs> <laughs> I know that I definitely grew up feeling like I kind of fit that <laughs> description. And, and the question that, that comes to my mind about that was, why did I feel the need to control everything? Mm -hmm. What was I really trying to gain? What was I, re what was really going on underneath? And same for you, right? And you're like, uh, and <laughs> I actually meant you as the audience, but you too, Angie, <laughs> is, is ask yourself if you feel like you're trying to over control in certain areas, why is that? What's really going on? And when you start to dissect it at first, it can come, you can come up with some reasons. So for example, like if maybe I'm, I'm a control freak when it comes to laundry, I am. And uh, I don't like it if Jared does the laundry. I don't let him do the laundry. I don't let him near the laundry room. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. If I were to ask myself, why is that? I could say, well, it's because he's going to do it wrong. And then I'm going to have to redo it. It's just going to be more work for me, right? When we start to analyze, well, why? Well, but when you start to apply it into bigger areas, well, well, why is it that I feel, feel that way? Um, then we start to get to some deeper kind of issues that can come up. So I don't know, Angie, if you want to talk more about what's really underneath us trying to control these little things. I think back when I was growing up and I felt like my environment was very chaotic. It felt unsafe and so I think the training there that I got un unconsciously was that I wanted to have things look a certain way in my environment, for example, in order to feel safe. And so like my toys or um, I wanted them organized a certain way, you know, my Barbie dolls and all that. Um, and, and I also started trying to control my food too when I was very young because I found that having potato chips and dip <laughs> or a sugar cookie really helped me to have some semblance of safety, you know? And totally. so the way that it showed up for me was um, controlling my environment and the organization piece, um, keeping it clean or neat or organized, you know, and then also my food. So, um, why did I want that control? It all came back down to helping me to feel safe in the world, you know? Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Well, and if you think about, there's so much in life that we can't control, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it makes us feel so, in, like, unstable. So then it's like we're going to overcompensate for that instability by really controlling the things that we can, like the laundry. Right. Right. <laughs> yes. And to this day, like I know, I know that that's still a pattern for me that when I feel out of control, because that's when we try to control, right? When we feel out of control, I remember the, it was two weekends before Maddie died last year. And subconsciously, I just needed to um, get my environment organized. And I was going through files like crazy stuff I hadn't touched in years. And I was going through my bookshelves and my, my paperwork files and stuff, trying to just cleanse and get rid of things. It was the weirdest thing. And I, it was, was not a planned activity. And one Saturday I started doing that and I, I did it like seven hours straight. Just, I could, you know, I couldn't do anything else. And yeah. so, and, and also how I keep the house clean and certain things when I'm feeling out of control, I will start cleaning. <laughs> now there's worse things I could do, right? But I will start cleaning because it gives me that feeling of, okay, I'm controlling something, you know? Yes. Yeah. It's kind of like a little bit of a distraction and also like that false sense of like productivity of like, oh, I'm getting something done. Right. And also, but it's like, it's, it is that here's something I can control and it makes you feel at least temporarily safe yeah. again. Yes. It totally makes sense. I do the same thing. 
the, the thing is, I'm aware I'm doing it. Like even when I do it now, I don't have the, I guess the luxury of, of hiding, you know, in that activity. So like, you I know, know. Like, I, I know, know what I'm doing. <laughs> I do know that I'm doing it. And I also am gentle on myself at that point. And I'll say, it's okay that you're doing this. I know you're trying to soothe sort of that part of me that feels unsafe. And so I just give myself permission to do it. You know, I still don't avoid other things. I, I, I'll get around to it. It might just be after my house is clean. <laughs> you know? Right, right. <clears throat> I like how you pointed out that you don't give yourself a hard time about it right. because it is so easy when you start recognizing like, oh, like that awareness, like kind of starts to kick you in the butt, like, mm -hmm. and make you feel like, oh my gosh, like I can never get over myself, you know, but it's, it's just one of those things that like I was talking to a friend recently and she just said, it's not about like this, this journey of healing, this journey of learning to express ourselves and be authentic and all this. It's less about having like perfect days all the time and everything being sunshine and rainbows. And it's more about learning to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you can learn to take care of yourself and honor those moments where things are just too much, that's okay, you know? And like, I, I don't know. I think sometimes in this journey, I, I'm expecting like an end game somewhere like, oh, at some point I'm going to be perfect. Like, that's why I'm on this journey. And I, right. I'm not there yet, but I'm almost there. And then when I'm not there, I'm like, why am I not there yet? Why am I not there yet? Why am I not there yet? But it's just yeah. remembering that, you know, we're never going to be perfect. We're always going to have flaws and those flaws make us human They make us relatable to other humans and they make us connect with each other because if you're perfect then you probably don't know how to connect with people real well <laughs> what are we trying to prove you know with that yeah i think like our our real main message and really our purpose in sharing with you guys is we we've, we've looked at this morgan and i and figured there's two main things two main messages that we want to have come across to you and and the first one is radical self-acceptance that you can really, we talked about this on our last blog about the acceptance piece of this. You know, do you accept you? And so that's one piece of it. Really knowing that life is not about perfection or trying to please other people to manage our, to manage your perception of us and vice versa. And then the other part of that is that we really want to convey is how can you surrender into life? We call it not being a control freak, however you want to define that, you know, it's like, if you don't want to be a control freak, the way we're defining that is surrender. And that surrender is not say, the same thing as letting go. I mean, those are our two main messages. And today we're talking more about the surrender piece of it. And I'm telling you, it's, it's a practice because it's not easy. Right. So, and to, just to correct, you said surrender is not the same as giving up. Oh, surrender is, is letting go, right? If we were to, if we were to put on a spectrum, it's the surrender is about letting go of the pain or letting go of the energy around something or letting go of putting energy into something you really can't change, but it's not giving up. It's not, did I say it was yeah. giving up? No, you were saying it's not letting go. Anyway, just clear. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. It's not giving up because people avoid it because they think it's giving up. Like right. I got to control. And if I don't control, I'm giving up. No, that's not true. Right. Work smarter, not harder. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't spend so much energy around something that you really have no control over. Right. Right. Um, I'll just share, let's see how much time we got. Not a lot. Um, the, a brief story. I did a equine therapy, which is a horse therapy session yesterday. And uh, my, my main lesson I got in this pin or an arena with a horse named Winchester. And, um, it was really cool. Cause I grew up with horses. I love horses. I I'm not afraid of them. And, but horses will pick up on our energy and they will avoid us physically if we don't feel like our energy is authentic. And so, um, I, when I, my intention, when I went into the arena was that I wanted to be okay with me regardless of outcomes. And to me, that's like a surrendering, right? Yeah. And so I, when I went in there, um, at first, Winchester um, was not following me. He, he did a little bit, but then like I was just walking around the perimeter and he would follow me a little bit and then he'd get stuck at the gate. 
because he was distracted by his buddies mm -hmm. and he were kind of standing out his other horse buddies standing outside of the barn and he could see them so he kept getting stuck and instead of me attaching to that outcome like oh he's ignoring me you know i just kept walking and then i noticed that he would get stuck there so i said oh you're stuck at the gate you know and i just observed it like i did it lovingly and as a result of that he he then uh, probably took him about a minute um he was attracted to the space that i was holding which was of love and he came towards me and then he just stayed by my side. I didn't have him on a halter or anything. He just stayed by my side and he walked that whole perimeter at least three times. And then we, then I stopped and I just was with him and I pet him and um, we really bonded and it was beautiful. And so I surrendered. It was a beautiful metaphor for surrendering to an outcome. You know, a lot of times we can get really caught up whether somebody believes the way that we do, if they're, if they're going to follow us or whatever. Um, if our children are going to do as we ask them to do, you know, it could be on any level. Totally. And when we can let go of the attachment to the outcome, we give them the space to move towards us. Yeah. So that's just a little surrender story. Morgan, do you have a, a brief story that you'd like to share or? You know, um, I was just thinking it's kind of like the metaphor of when you like trying to grab a feather. Like if you try to grab a feather, the, the air from your hand will, will push the feather further away, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, it's like us trying to control the outcomes in our life. And, but the really, the way you grab a feather is you, you put your hand underneath and you wait, mm. you wait and it's hard, but yeah. that's what you do. And you trust that it's going to land in its own time. And so it, I, you know, it's, I think it, that's beautiful. And I love the story about the horse of yeah. Chester. That's so cool. So, <laughs> yeah. So then, um, you know, it's like, it's like that, uh, the serenity prayer, right? It, mm -hmm. It's kind of like that. Oh, you, did you want to recite that? Yes. This is my very favorite, one of my very favorite prayers, especially when it comes to surrender. And I've used it over my life many, many times. And it's the serenity prayer serenity prayer. It's a very popular prayer. And it just goes like, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So yeah. That's just so that beautiful. Prayer. So beautiful. And you don't have to call it God. You can call it whatever, you know, if you don't want to make it a religious thing, yeah. um, just say higher power, universe, whatever. Or don't even say yeah. anything. <laughs> right. It's just about having that integrity and that knowledge, that understanding to stop trying to change things that we just can't. It's like pushing a brick wall. Like it's not going to go anywhere and you're just going to get exhausted and frustrated. Um, so yeah, so we just want to honor you guys and, and just look at where you're trying to control things in your life. What is really going on and what can you do to try to help give yourself the love and acceptance and peace that you need so that you can surrender to whatever it is so that you can move forward just a happier more energetic person so thank you guys so much for watching this video please don't forget to like it comment down below your thoughts about you know surrender and how hard it can be at times and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content like this we will see you guys in the next video bye, bye.